What's up guys and welcome back. In today's episode, we're attacking the final fitment of this wide body kit on the GC8. So I know last time I said I would make the wide body kit even wider and that's still going down. But the first step to doing that is actually building new wheel arches around the massive wheels that we have. So that's what's going down in this episode. Stay tuned. <laughs> So this is where we left off last time after putting the wheels on and dropping the car to what I think is a pretty decent ride height. But the car still won't go any lower and that's because of the rear fenders. The tire is touching the fender right there. So if I was to drive like this, I would destroy the entire quarter panel. So that's no good and it needs to be addressed. But in today's video, we're actually concerned about what's going on underneath. Right there with the metal and uh, as you can tell, it's also touching. So that's no good. And what you would do normally in a two-door coupe is cut all of this out, build a new wheel arch, and you'd be done. But on the four doors, it's a lot more complicated. You've got a door, you've got a door jam, and they basically get in the way of everything. So I don't even know what I'm going to do about it yet. Probably have to cut a bunch here, cut a bunch on the door. But uh, I can't tell you guys what the best plan is right now. Uh, so I'll just set the camera aside and start working on this thing. And I'll show you guys once I have a decent update. All right, I've just finished making the major cuts and the wheel now has as much clearance as it's going to get. I went all the way to the inside of the wheel arch here, uh, which is what people do with WRC kits. But in my case, I had to cut into the door jam, which is going to transfer over to the door. But that's for later. For now, what I'm doing is uh, focusing on rebuilding this wheel arch. So I took this cardboard and I'm kind of placing it uh, in place of the wheel arch and figuring, figuring out how much metal I need. So before I can continue with the wheel arch, I need to figure out the door because if I close it, you can see it right there, the line where the wheel arch would be interferes with this part of the door. So all of this needs to go away. And I've started cutting it. So I did one cut over here, one on this side, one across, and that allows me to push this metal piece up into the door, that one as well. And that should give me just enough room to make everything fit nicely. I've just finished modifying the door jam and what I did is I cut this entire piece out and placed it two centimeters higher away from the tires. That gives me just enough room for my wheel arch to go there and also for the rubber seal to go against this part of the metal and seal uh, so that everything remains watertight just like it is from factory. So that's all good to go now. I just need to patch this area in the back and clean up some of the welds. But looking at the door, I haven't welded it yet but I've uh, finished pushing this part of the metal in. I still need to cut a little bit here, 
but I also had to cut a bunch of the door here. That's about, I'd say two to three centimeters. But the good thing is that now everything fits, so I can actually go ahead and close the door and everything lines up perfectly. All right, so I've just finished patching up this area. It looks pretty good now, but then I realized there's a big hole down here full of rust. So I need to cut this out and patch it as well. Two hours later. So that's all fixed up nicely. All the bad metal is gone and I've gone ahead and put a coat of zinc primer on everything just to protect it. Uh, so the next step is going to be welding the actual wheel arch. All right, so the door is now officially done, but before I go ahead and put primer on it, I just wanted to show some of the work again, in case some of you guys want to do the same thing. So last thing I did was to seal everything off on this side, but uh, the trickiest part was to ensure that it would be watertight with the rest of the shell. So that's what this uh, seal is for, and it goes somewhere like this. Uh, so that's why I had to recreate this lip, which was quite tricky. So if I didn't do that, then all the water could get in because this would have basically nothing to press against and seal. So that was the tricky part, but it's now all done. And I can go ahead and close the door and show you guys what it looks like. So that's with it closed. There is just enough room so that the door can move, but uh, not too much where, where the water would get in. And uh, the rest of the arch is also done. All the welds look pretty good. And underneath, it's all primered up and ready to go. And again, here's what the top side looks like. So I've gone ahead and cleaned everything up here, welded everything all the way around. And uh, here I had about a half centimeter gap. So I made a little patch plate. And uh, that's why you see two lines of beads going around. But uh, I think it came out pretty good. So just to give you guys a quick idea of exactly how much of the door I've had to cut away, this is the original size of the door given by the uh, wide body panel and this is the new size of the door so this is exactly how much has been cut so that side is now done but guys keep in mind that's about four full days of work just to get to this stage on one side but i have two sides so i need to do the exact same thing to the other side that's another four days but i won't make you guys watch any of it because it's literally the exact same thing as on this side so i'm just going to do it and show you guys what the end result is let's go one eternity later all right, guys, it is done. The left side is finally completed. So let me show you quick what it looks like. We have the same wheel well as on the other side. The door has been modified as well. Uh, the primer is still drying. That's why you see some dark spots. But uh, other than that, it's the same thing as on the other side, except that this side can go a little bit higher because you don't have to worry about the fuel filler neck and uh, the fuel door. So I made this go a little bit higher because the wheel will have some negative camber, so that brings the tire this way. So when the wheel goes up, it will be slanted like this. So I kind of uh, made this with the same angle. But uh, other than that, it's uh, pretty much all completed and ready to go. So now what I really want to do is put the rear wheels back on and drop this thing all the way to the ground. And uh, if everything goes by plan, the suspension should be able to bottom out fully before anything hits the rear wheels. Thank you. 
All right, so I didn't hear any weird noises or anything, so that's a good sign. And if we check in here, we should be able to see that white bushing up there. Uh, that's the top of the coilover. So that's as low as we can go. And uh, there's still plenty of room all the way around the tire. So that's perfect. And on the other side, same thing. Way enough room. And uh, that's exactly what we wanted. So now we're back to the original question of why in hell did we spend eight days working on the real wheel arches when they were perfectly fine in the first place? Well, the answer is simple. Not only did we gain a lot of suspension travel doing so, we now have an actual wheel arch that extends further than the tires, so we can cut it to the right size and use it as a template to widen the wide body kit and ensure that uh, whatever the wheel does, the quarter pa panel will never interfere with the tires. So the next steps are obviously to cut the wheel arches and start modifying the quarter panels to fit them. But that will be for a different video. That's all I have for you guys today. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.